Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our Sunday service and welcome to session two of our Summer Psalm series. As we begin our worship today, shall we join together in a prayer? Faithful God, whose word is life, come with saving power to free our praise, inspire our prayer and shape our lives for the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Last week, Rachel kicked off our series with an introduction to the Psalms and a study of Psalm 4, from which some of the words we say at night prayer are taken. If you haven't watched that video yet, I'd encourage you to do so. It reminded me of why the Psalms are such a powerful way for us to meet with Jesus, how they allow us to personally find out more about God's truth and character, and how even today, the Psalms still speak into every situation that we might face. I've picked a psalm this morning that has greatly nourished my relationship with God over the years and I've brought us out here to Chelveston uh, very early. It's just it's around 5am um, so that we might hear it together as the sun rises. Psalm 19 to me is a psalm about wisdom and the pursuit of God's truth. It's a psalm about creation but also one about scripture. It testifies to how we might know God deeper and fuller in both. So, as the light breaks forth into this new day, let's listen to God's word together. This is Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words, no sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, than much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth and this meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's raining pretty heavy now, so I'm indoors, but for me, Psalm 19 is just one of those that I love to read and pray in the open air beneath a big sky. Because this psalm, like a walk in nature, is one that helps me maintain a healthy outlook and perspective. It takes me away from my own ideas and concerns and brings me back onto the path of God's truth. I mentioned in a previous sermon a few weeks ago that Psalm 8 is my favourite psalm, but I really like 19 too. I tend to group them both together actually. While in Psalm 8 the psalmist ponders the wonders of a starry night sky, Psalm 19 contemplates the glory of God revealed in the breaking of day and the rising of the sun. So you've got this wonderful contrast in both Psalms in the nature of day and night. But God remains the same throughout it all. He's 
present and indeed revealed in both, in everything. It's pretty awesome. If you've got Psalm 19 in front of you, which I definitely encourage, you'll see it's split into four sections or stanzas, whatever you want to call them. There's a break after verse 6, another after verse 9, verse 13, and then one verse, 14, stands alone at the end. I think we can divide it even more simply, though. Verses 1 to 6 concern nature and creation, while verses 7 to 13 talk about God's law and commandments, Holy Scripture. These two sections are brought together as the psalmist concludes their song, their prayer, in verse 14. It's this structure, this proclamation of God's glory revealed in creation and scripture that has encouraged many to employ Psalm 19 as a biblical example of the compatibility of science and belief in God, or put another way, faith and reason. This alone makes Psalm 19 very worthy of prayerful consideration in our modern world, I think. So let's have a closer look at it. Reading through Psalm 19, it doesn't take long to realise that you are looking at something special, a very beautiful, purposeful work of literature. C.S. Lewis described Psalm 19 as the greatest poem in the Psalter, and one of the greatest lyrics in the world. And he was not somebody who used his words lightly. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the end of the world. Wow, so although they can't speak about God with words, the sky and the heavens in their magnitude and beauty give us a glimpse of God, of his glory. In this, their own voice, they proclaim his existence, his power, his works from one end of the earth to the other. That's quite an extraordinary thought, isn't it? As the wind and the clouds and the rays of sunlight blanket our world, God's glory is declared on the same scale. Creation sings of its creator, and that song is heard in every desert, valley, woodland, on every mountain range. And then, from verse 5, we hear of the rising sun, placed purposefully in the sky. It lights and warms everything before it, itself a reflection of the glory of its maker, the inextinguishable light, the all-consuming fire, the God of the universe. The first section of Psalm 19 then clearly testifies to the revelation of God's glory through nature. God reveals himself in part to us through his works, through creation. And in this instance, particular mention is made of the natural world above us, the sky, the stars and the sun. It's very powerful imagery. It leads us to think about just how big and supreme our God is. He's a master craftsman, a genius designer, the one whom every element obeys and whose every plan sees success. At this point, the psalmist alters their focus. They turn now to God's word, actual words, to the law and the commandments. In verses 7 through to 9, we're presented with this list, the law, the statutes, precepts, commands and decrees, all of them of the Lord. That ownership is emphasised over and over again, of the Lord, of the Lord, of the Lord. And so these things too, like The sun and the stars reveal God to us. They point us to him. Like his law, the Lord is perfect. As his statutes are trustworthy, so is he. God is right and radiant, pure and eternal, just like his commandments and his decrees. The fear of the Lord is mentioned here too, that reverent, awestruck fear featured in the book of Proverbs and identified as the beginning of all wisdom. 
The psalmist describes God's word as more precious than pure gold, sweeter than honey straight from the honeycomb. Because like the sun, Holy Scripture shines a light on that which is hidden. It illuminates the path of truth and directs us away from ourselves, away from the world, towards our God. That's what verses 10 through to 13 are all about. These lines tie it all together. God reveals himself, his will and his nature to us through creation and of course through scripture. When we seek him out in these places, we, when we allow his light and his glory to shine upon us, we can find wisdom in this life. We can find discernment and a bigger, deeper perspective and purpose. Psalm 19 reminds us of what it means to be alive. Our purpose in this life is to enjoy God, to love him and to worship him with all our hearts and souls and mind. To join all creation in testifying to his glory and truth. Jesus himself teaches that this is the greatest of the commandments. This week, Psalm 19 has helped me to preserve a healthy perspective to inhabit a greater openness to God's revelation and direction. Walking in the countryside, looking up at the stars, seeing the sunrise, all while meditating upon God's word in my heart has reminded me afresh of who my God is. He's the God of the universe. Outside of time, he has greater plans and purposes than I can ever imagine. All the while, though, he is the God who seeks me out personally and in turn desires that I might seek him also. He's chosen to reveal himself to me in the leaves of the tree and the birds of the sky, in the thunderstorms and the rainbow that follows it. He has revealed his salvation plan to me through his holy word and has recorded in writing the lengths that he is prepared to go so that one day I might know him in full. I pray that God might reveal himself to you afresh in Psalm 19 and all the Psalms in this week and the weeks ahead. As the sun rises each day, may you be reminded of God's warm embrace and his glorious light. May you join with all creation as you testify to the works of his hands and the wonders of his grace. Amen. We turn now to a time of prayer. Our response this morning is, Creator God, hear our prayer. Creator God, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you have chosen to reveal yourself to us through your word and through the works of your hands. May we proclaim your glory and testify to your good news throughout the world alongside all creation. Give us fresh insight this day, Lord, into the ways in which you are at work. Give us wisdom so that we might navigate this life following your path of truth. Creator God, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the book of Psalms for these songs and poems that have brought hope, comfort and direction to so many throughout the ages. As we journey throughout the Psalms over these next few weeks, may we pray them together as a united body seeking to know you better. Help us to grow as a church in our relationships with one another and with you. Creator God, hear our prayer. Jesus, we continue to lift up to you our fragile and complicated world. There is so much fear and confusion about us, Lord. It's easy to feel hopeless and lost. But we find confidence in the knowledge that you are Lord of all, that you have plans beyond our understanding and that you care for each and every one of your children dearly. Thank you, Lord, for your salvation hope. We pray for a resolution to this current pandemic. 
for those on the front lines treating and studying coronavirus. We ask that you might guide them by your healing spirit, Lord. Creator God, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters around the world facing persecution for their faith, Lord, we pray that they might know your strength and comfort. Thank you for their bold witness and commitment to your gospel. We pray for a more united world, Lord, for an end to conflict and injustice where it exists. Jesus, our Prince of Peace, heal our brokenness by your Spirit. Creator God, hear our prayer. And now, Lord, we lift to you in prayer the people and situations that are especially in our thoughts today, naming them out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Creator God, hear our prayer. And now, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. A final blessing for us all as we conclude our worship this morning. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon us, his children, that we may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all peoples. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>